Well, it's Fox Sports Lab, it's NFL, and it's James Clements. That is the winning trifecta for this program for the next 10 minutes. James, how are you, my friend? I'm doing very well, Maddie. We had an absolute cracker week nine of the NFL, didn't we? Like, absolute perfect way to bring up the halfway mark of the NFL season. Over in Germany, you saw the Chiefs step up, and we had an absolute belter of that Eagles-Cowboys game. Uh, the less said about Tuesday morning's Monday night football game, the better, I think, because that was just got gouge out your eyes kind of bad. But otherwise, the season is set up perfectly for the second half. Well, you, you mentioned the Chiefs. I mean, we've got the the, you know, the, the, the kings of the Chiefs, with Mahomes and Kelsey coming out and saying, this is the best defense they've played in. At the moment, the, the good teams, defense is winning football games, and the unders is the punters' utopia at the moment because of it. Unders are absolutely chaotic at the moment, Matty. I'll tell you that much. I think at the moment it's 83.52. That's 61.5% going under. Mm. And you're just sort of seeing like those top teams really leaning on their defenses. And I think that's why you'll see a team like Buffalo. They've dipped so dramatically with all those injuries on the defensive end. Because like Josh Allen can do all the stuff that he wants. But if you're like not getting any stops on the other side of the ball, it makes it really hard to win. And then I sort of think the Chiefs, that defense is unreal. You look at the Philly defense, I think the reason, even though they're eight and one, like people still have big questions about them is because that's secondary, right? Like you can still yep. throw on them. We saw that last week. CD Lamb goes completely off and they came very, very close to winning that very game yeah. despite themselves, basically. You got Dak Prescott, you know, walking out of bounds when he shouldn't have. Um, you just have like all these weird moments. And you're like, well, Philly do, do feel sort of vun vulnerable and it all comes down to the defense. And I'll tell you what, my favorite team at the moment, actually two of my favorite teams, they reside in a specific division, Matty, and their defenses are leading the way. And there's another couple of defenses in that division that has, what is it, the AFC North? Absolutely flying at the moment. You touched on that too, I reckon about four or five weeks ago. And this has turned into the monster division, hasn't it? Because we've got the Bengals who are five and three. Their defense is going great. Burrow's back to his best. I mean, they can go all the way, yet they're on the bottom of the AFC North. And we know how well Lamar's traveling with Baltimore at the top. Exactly. If the playoffs started today, which they don't, I just need to point that they don't start today. But if they did, just as a hypothetical, they'd all be in the playoffs. That's incredible. The entire division. But like we saw Cleveland just put the clamps on Arizona last week. Um, Arizona were on hiding to nothing, right? Like they moved Josh Dobbs to Minnesota. What a story that was as well. He goes into Min well, goes over to Minnesota. He's got five days, doesn't know anyone's name. And they're suddenly slinging passes and winning games. But Cleveland took care of Arizona. That defense is an absolute juggernaut. You've got Cincinnati, probably the most balanced team in the NFL, in my opinion, uh, who look awesome. They're five and three. They've now won four on the trot. Like yeah. they're rounding into form. But the thing is, Baltimore feel like the class of the NFL at the moment for me. Like they are putting together on offense. You saw Odell Beckham Jr. finally get in the end zone last week, had his best game basically for years, it felt like. And of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers just always hanging around five and three. That's just what they do. They just hang around. They win more than more than half their games what, year in, year out. Mike Tomlin's never had an under 500 season. And they have like a weird sort of schedule coming up where if they can lean on their defense, if they just get enough out of that offense where Kenny Pickett some, somehow week in, week out also pulls like a rabbit out of his hat in the fourth quarter. I swear they should just play somebody else for the first three quarters, Matty. <laughs> maybe, maybe roll Trubisky out there for the first three. Then get Kenny Pickett out there, and away we go. But that's an absolutely like juggernaut of a division. And to be honest, like the Bengals, I love them at the moment. Most balanced team in football. They look great on defense. The offense, Joey Burrow looks really, really healthy. And if I'll, you know, if I was going to have a sneaky look at an MVP pick, it's probably coming out of the AFC North, right? You've got Lamar looking unreal. Yeah. That defense is really good, and you've got Joe Burrow. I think he's the smoky for me because even though he missed those, you know, had a couple of down weeks early on. I think the narrative won't really matter if he just rips off another 12-game winning streak, which is very possible with this Cleveland very team. Very possible. See, that calf injury is history. It's a long time ago. All right, let's get into it. Thursday night footy, Friday morning footy here. If there was a wooden spoon in the NFL, this is the wooden spoon game. The Panthers 1-7 and seven, up against the Bears 2-7. and seven. The Bears have a spread of 3.5. The total points will be interesting, 38.5. How do you see the game? Yeah, I feel like this, this is going to go over because this is one of those weird setups where Chicago own Carolina's draft pick. So you talk about a wooden spoon. The wooden spoon is the number one draft pick in the draft. And guess what? Chicago get it if Carolina are bad. So Chicago are wildly incentivized to like tag Carolina with another big loss. Whereas Carolina, they don't care. They're not trying to tank. They're just bad. Like They're just bad. So I think they'll come out hammering tongs. I think we'll see a fair amount of scoring in this, which is like one of those sort of contrary to... I think we've seen 
it's about it's, it was a bit of a split with the over unders going in for Thursday night football. And I think we've just sort of started leaning towards some of these unders. I'm going to go over in this one just because I think the defenses on both sides, not great. Uh, Carolina is not bad during like through the air. They can stop passing. They're not bad, but their run defense is like the fifth worst in the NFL. So I think for this one, I'd still be looking at Chicago to win and cover. I think Carolina are the worst team in the league against the line. They're one, six and one. Um, and Chicago, look, they're not that great. They might get Justin Fields back this week as well. But we're going to go to them at the line, the minus three and a half. It feels kind of safe. They've probably just got enough weapons on both sides of the ball, especially with Donta Foreman, their running back. He had a really big game a couple of weeks ago. And when they're in these games, and we've seen Chicago put up pretty big scores before, he's really, really heavily involved. I think he had 83 yards last week, that sort of stuff. So if I was looking at the same game for this one, I'd be looking at Chicago at the line minus three and a half. Uh, the total points would go the over and we'll go the Donta Foreman anytime touchdown. Just because I think with the pass catches and stuff like that on both sides of the ball, it's really tough to trust both these QBs. But if you trust the running back, you should be okay. All right, that's Thursday night. Uh, Sunday night games, a uh, couple of good ones. I mean, the Browns, uh, we find out how good they are there at Baltimore. I think the 49ers in Jacksonville is a beauty. And uh, the Vikings, after a slow start, take on the Saints. That's an important game for them. But where did you want to play, punting-wise? That is a fascinating game. They, I think you sort of hit on like a couple of the really good early games. I think we've got the Pats Colts in Germany again. Mm-hmm. And I look, my beloved Pats have been an absolute garbage fire this year. Like just like that bin on fire, it's melted down. You know, the bin chickens aren't even swirling around that anymore. They're like, that smells too bad for me. <laughs> and the Colts are not much more, like not much more chop. Like they're pretty bad as well, right? So I'd probably steer clear of that game because weird things happen in Germany. And You've got that sort of, as you mentioned, the Niners-Jags game, both coming off a bye. Jacksonville, uh, the best team in the league against the line, but not at home. Like, it's very strange. So I'd probably lean the Niners on that one. But if we're going to look at, I think that line is around like two and a half as well. So it feels pretty okay. Uh, You've also got Detroit versus the Chargers. That's a fascinating game. It should be absolute fireworks. But Mm -hmm. after we saw from the Chargers this week, who knows what's actually going to happen. But for... Probably the four best picks for the Sunday night slate. I'd probably go with Pittsburgh against Green Bay. That Green Bay offense has looked horrible. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love just sailing passes over bemused and befuddled, confused and angry receivers is becoming basically the the norm in Packerville. And the line four and a half, it's basically it's Pittsburgh at home as a favorite. They've covered their last four or five as home favorites. I feel pretty good about that. I think their defense can really make Green Bay work, cover that line. You mentioned Baltimore, Cleveland. Awesome game. Absolutely yep. fascinating setup. Two great defenses. I think Lamar and the Ravens get enough uh, enough done there to cover the four and a half point line, I think, as well. Division games are always a bit wonky, but the Ravens, as I mentioned, they're playing the best football in the NFL right, right now. They're, they look incredible. Lamar looks great. It's going to be interesting to see them go up against Miles Garrett and the Cleveland defense, but I trust the Ravens enough. Cincinnati, I'm going to stay with the AFC North as well. Eight and a half point favorites against Houston. Houston have been really good this year at times. They also, when they run into a half-decent team, they can fall apart. CJ Stroud lit it up last week, 470 yards, a rookie record, five touchdowns. Look unreal. That was against Tampa, though. They stink. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati, really, really good. Eight and a half, I'll take them. And as you mentioned, the Minnesota Vikings versus the Saints. This game is so crazy. I love the Vikings. Plus two and a half for the Vikings. Josh Dobbs comes in, doesn't know anyone's yeah. name, is winning the games for them against, what was it, Atlanta last week. I think with a week under his belt, we see a very fun, weird Minnesota defense that just loves blitzing. New Orleans' defense is obviously pretty good as well. This is a great tussle. This could go right down to the wire, so I'll take the points, I think, with Minnesota, like about plus two and a half. My, Minnesota at home, the Saints haven't covered in five straight games against fellow NFC teams. So I also really don't trust Dennis Allen and that Saints coaching staff to get this one done. So I'll lean with Minnesota. So I think we'll go Pittsburgh minus four and a half over Green Bay, Baltimore minus four and a half over Cleveland, Minnesota plus two and a half against the Saints, and Cincinnati minus eight and a half with Houston. And that's probably the four best for me for a uh, big sort of Monday morning multi. All right. We've got a couple to finish up with quickly here. Sunday night footy, the Jets four and four up against the Raiders, four and five. The Raiders sacked their coach, come out and beat the Giants 36. The line's only small. It's only a half a point for uh, the Raiders and the Total points in that game is 36 and a half. Yeah, we're still going to go under in that one, I think, Matty. These are two pop gun offenses, right? We saw the Jets absolutely stink it up on Tuesday morning. The Raiders, they just can't score basically ever. They have their dead coach bounce last week. You're yeah. 
then want to go right. Like the adrenaline of firing your coach, getting that guy out of the building has worn off. Now it's like actual brass tacks, like, oh, now we're going to play a really good defense. The Jets defense is awesome. Um, you saw the Chargers like just have some weird things on offense last week. The Jets, they were really let down by Zach Wilson. I think he can do enough. I think the Jets can cover this line. I think we see the under hit. And I like Brees Hall. He had some moments in that Chargers game where I'm like, I just want to see him get off the chain just once, just once. And I think he'll do it against the Raiders. So I think we'll go the Jets at the line, the under, and Brees Hall anytime touchdown in that game. Finally, Monday Night Footy, Tuesday, our time. The Broncos, three and five. One of those wins against uh, the homeless Chiefs. Uh, against Buffalo, the spread seven and a half. Buffalo are five and four here, James. They've, they've got to start showing something. They're a little bit banged up, I know, but Josh Allen's got to stop throwing interceptions. It is the weirdest part of this Buffalo experience, I think. Josh Allen on one side where he can, can't stop giving the other team the, the ball, basically, and their defense not being able to stop anyone. The thing is, Denver, like Russell Wilson and this Denver offense, doesn't really scare me. No. The defense is really rounded into form. So if Josh Allen just keeps the turnovers under control, I think Buffalo win this one pretty handily. And if you got that sort of like seven and a half, eight and a half point line, you do sort of tend to worry if it's more than a touchdown, obviously. Yeah. But I think Buffalo in Buffalo in against Buffalo. the Broncos, against the Broncos team that's been pretty bad at times. I think the offense really kicks into gear. So I'd probably go Buffalo at the line. We'd probably go Josh Allen anytime touchdown as well. I think he can run it in and take it in by himself. And Stefan Diggs, despite like a weird game last week, still got in uh, against Cincinnati. So I'd probably go with Stefan Diggs anytime touchdown as well. I do wonder about that over-under. What is it, like 47? It's just like, oh, it's just a bit of a weird number. Yeah. I'd probably go the under. So if we're going to go Buffalo at the line, we'll go the under and two Buffalo touchdowns from Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs as Buffalo get the job done. Just go all turn it, bump it up to 50 and make sure it happens. Mate, we're out of time. We'll talk to you next week. Always a pleasure, Matty. James Clements joining us on Fox Sports Lab NFL Week 10. There's a couple of cracking games there, and we'll talk to you next week. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.